Jimmy Butler took the final shot in the game seven of the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat series. Obviously, hindsight is 2020. We all know it was a bad shot in the moment, but Jimmy Butler was in there. He had the adrenaline running through him, and he took it. He felt like it was a great shot. He felt like he had a chance to make it, and I don't blame him one bit for it. I kind of hate to see all the media hating on him right now. I'm, I'm not a Jimmy fan by any means. Um, obviously, ever since they beat us in the bubble that year, you know, Heat fans have been a little bit uh, a little bit obnoxious. Uh, a few of them have. I have some Heat fans um, that are, are Heat. I have some friends that are Heat fans, and um, they're not all bad, um, as there are obnoxious Bucks fans, obviously, and I try to stay as unbiased as possible. So as we go into this video, I want to keep my mind open on the Heat, despite, you know, being a, um, a, a hater of the Miami Heat, seeing neither of these teams. Honestly, if I could have, I would have had the Warriors and Mavericks play for the finals and the Heat and Celtics not play for anything. They can just go back to Cancun. But obviously that's not how it works. So at the end of the day, here we are discussing the series, a series that went to seven when I honestly thought it could have went to five. I think the Celtics could have won won this series fairly easily and honestly if Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown had been able to put up consistent play something that I'll talk about in my finals review or preview next um, video will probably be tomorrow morning so you'll see this on a Wednesday I believe or a Tuesday you'll see that video on a Wednesday morning so yeah that's how it's going to work but anyways if Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown had been able to put up consistent uh, scoring and you know they had support from their bench unit like they did in those few games that they came out and won in Miami I think this Celtics team could have taken them down in five very easily um, and that's how I felt the entire series honestly I believe in my prediction video a while back that's exactly what I said I think the Celtics were just a deeper team and um, Jimmy Butler just didn't have enough help I'll, I mean you can always say what if Tyler Hero didn't get hurt Tyler Hero comes out plays in that second half of the Miami of game seven in Miami maybe they win um, obviously it ended up being a two-point win for the Celtics or I believe they maybe won by four because free throws at the end that didn't really matter um, but yeah so the Heat lose in seven games easily could have been five in my opinion but at the end of the day it still went to seven and I've got to give credit to Jimmy Butler I don't want to see any hate in the comments I, I can't stand all the people that tweeted out at Jimmy Butler about how bad of a shot it is I mean um, a lot of YouTubers tweeted out, you know, some popular guys, some um, some other basketball players, you know. In Miami, Jimmy is that guy. Jimmy's the LeBron. Jimmy's the Steph. Jimmy is the um, Igudal. Oh, sorry, wrong name right there. Um, but anyways, Jimmy Butler is the guy. He is the leader of that team. And um, if you really think about it, I mean, Max Struess had just missed a three at the, um, what, not the series before. He hit a clutch three before that, but he missed one in between. He ended up missing the potential game tying three after that, or um, I think it would have put him down by one, but the potential game tying three basically to keep them in the game with about five seconds left and Celtics rebound, nobody fouls because at that point you're down by four, no point in fouling. So obviously it was going to Jimmy Butler. You don't have Tyler here. Duncan Robinson, these playoffs has proved why he does not deserve a big payday. He's an elite shooter, can't do anything else on the court. Um, hopefully he improves. I, I like Michigan basketball, you know, um, DJ Wilson didn't end up too good for the Bucks, but I've always been a big fan of him, so I like Michigan basketball, Jordan Poole. Um, just something that I like to see is Michigan players from basketball at least. Can't stand them in football, but I like them in basketball to succeed. Um, so hopefully Duncan Robinson's able to develop other parts of his game a little bit more, most notably defense, because basically Matisse Thybul and Duncan Robinson are the opposites. Matisse is the best defender in the NBA. One of them at least can't play offense at all, so he gets benched. Duncan Robinson, one of the best shooters in the NBA, can't play defense at all, he gets benched. So you don't have Max Struess reliably, you don't have Tyler Hero, you don't have Duncan Robinson. Kyle Lowry struggling to get open at all because he's either flopping or he's actually get fa getting fouled on possession, so that's not an option. Bam Adebayo can't shoot three, so that's not really an option. You're down two, maybe you could have waited a few seconds, but at the end of the day, if you put the ball in our hands as a person, as um, somebody that obviously... You know, we all want that moment of of success almost. We want that big moment in the light. And you're wide open with a chance to take the lead and you hit that shot. You're going to be the hero. Imagine that he hits that shot. They go on to win the finals. That will be the shot remembered for years. That will be the game time shot. Jimmy Butler hits a game winning three against the Celtics in game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. They go on to win the finals against the Warriors. Jimmy Butler finals MVP. 
then maybe he's in a discussion for one of the best players of all time just off of that season alone. Obviously, I don't think he's up there, obviously, but he missed the shot. And then you go on the other side of that. Imagine he doesn't take the shot. He's open. A lot of people are screaming at him to shoot. He doesn't shoot it. He brings it back. Let's the offense settle. He doesn't end up taking the shot. What if they run a play, get it to a player who misses the shot? Then he's going to get the LeBron treatment, you know, the whole, um, you're the best player on the team. You shouldn't pass up a shot like that. Giannis gets it all the time. They say, you know, since he's not a great shot or shoot, um, shot creator or playmaker or, um, not playmaker. He's a great playmaker, shot creator or, um, fourth quarter option. I guess the word would be ball handler in the fourth quarter that, uh, he is not the, um, the LeBrons of the world. He's not an MJ. He's not a, in the GOAT conversation, which he isn't yet. But I still think he could be without being the fourth quarter closer. Anyways, he's going to get that kind of treatment if he doesn't take that shot. So at the end of the day, no matter what, Jimmy Butler was going to have to take a shot. And obviously, he's not the most prolific three-point shooter. Um, his career statistics can show that. He needed a shot like that. And maybe he could have came in a little bit, attacked Al Horford one-on-one -on -one and got something. But all series long, it's been a slugfest. The refs have been terrible. Who knows what the ref would have called or if they would have just let it play off. I mean, uh, maybe he gets fouled and they don't call it. Maybe he pushes off just a little bit and they do call it on him. I mean, so many different things could have happened. It was not guaranteed that he makes a shot if he goes in. So he's open there. He's in his movement. He's, um, he, you know, he's in momentum. He's uh, already ready to take the shot. He pulls up, planks it off the back side of the rim. Un like just a sad moment to see for the Heat fans out there and for Jimmy Butler. I kind of wish he would have hit it just because I like the Heat a little bit, just a tiny bit better than the Celtics. But at the end of the day, he missed the shot. And as a Bucks fan on the outside, from what I've seen in the following few days, it almost looks like this shot may have torn this Heat team apart. We've seen some rumors. And I'm, I'm, I don't know if I want to get into them too depth in this video. Maybe I get into them in another video. But apparently because of how poorly they rebounded in that series, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, the, um, the Miami Heat are looking to trade Bam Adebayo. They're looking to upgrade their center position. I mean, Bam, he's a great defender. He's one of the, obviously, in my opinion, he's the best perimeter big man defender in the NBA. Nobody gets out there and runs around as good as he does against guards, against forwards. He can do it all on defense. He's a rim protector at some at some levels too. Not the most dominant rim protector, but he can make plays at the rim and um, alter shots, obviously, to an, a degree that helps you on the court. But at the end of the day, he's not tall enough. They got out-rebounded almost every game, I believe, in that series. I mean, Al Horford was dominating the boards. Grant Williams was dominating the boards. Um, probably even Jason Tatum, I believe. I think Jason Tatum had 10 rebounds in that final game seven, so... They just were not able to get the boards like they needed to. And in my opinion, that was the biggest problem that lost them this series. I don't even think it was the problem that they didn't have firepower around Jimmy Butler because Tyler Hero had a decent series. Bam Adebayo had a great game seven. Kyle Lowry did all right across the series. Obviously, he's not the star that he once was, but he's still a solid scorer and a solid offensive option and maybe as a second or third guy. But... With Bam Adebayo struggling, with the team struggling as a whole, it is very likely that Bam will be shopped around. Maybe him or um, Tyler Hero with some picks. And um, there's some excellent targets out there. Maybe they go after a guy like DeAndre Ayton from Phoenix, something that I've seen. And um, maybe I'll make a video about this in a few days, some targets that I'd like to see the Heat go after as a center. Um, but we, we'll go through a few of the options right now. Maybe I'll go a little bit more in depth. You know, you've got DeAndre Ayton, you've got Miles Turner, you've got... A guy in Joel Embiid who said openly that he would like to play with Jimmy Butler again. So maybe that's the cue right there. Maybe they go after a guy like Rudy Gobert, Clint Capella, guys that are openly on the trade market. And um, it's going to be interesting to see if this loss in this series kind of starts to dismantle the Heat dynasty that they were trying to form, um, that they wanted to form. They didn't really get a chance to because they haven't won a finals yet. But Forming a dynasty is so difficult, and a good team like this, they're going to be back next year depending on what happens. Maybe this series killed them. Maybe this series makes them make some bad trades. Maybe they lose a few role players that were really key to the game. Um, it's always going to be interesting to keep an eye on that, and um, maybe this losing this series helps them out. Maybe it you know, gets them to trade Bam a little bit earlier than they would have. Maybe they trade Tyler here a little bit earlier than they would have. We don't know. Let me know how you guys are feeling. If you're a Heat fan... 
Do you want to trade Bam? Do you want to get a package together with Hero for a superstar, maybe? Um, I think they could really get an all-star if you patch, package Bam and um, Tyler Hero together. Maybe you don't want to give up Bam and just get an okay center, a guy that you know can can um, get you rebounds, get you blocks. Just a guy that's pretty good um, or about on par with where Tyler Hero is at. So how are you guys feeling about this? If you're not a fan of the Heat, as always, you're more than welcome to share me your share your opinions down in the comments down below. I love talking with you guys. I love discussing with you guys about anything in the NBA. If you want to see a video or hear my opinion about something, go ahead and hit my Instagram down below. You can DM me or just leave a comment about it. I'll get to you as soon as possible, and I'll gladly make a video about it if you'd like to see that. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to hit the like button. And if you enjoyed it a lot, please subscribe. It helps me out so much. Thank you so much for joining me on this one. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.